Welcome to the shop everyone. Today I'm part 12 of this 454 big block build. I'm going to be going over at least how I go about getting push rod length for some of the engines I've built in the past. And then after I get the push rod length, uh, I'm going to go over how I make my own adjustable push rods to do these checks. Now, one of the advantages of like buying uh, one from a manufacturer that makes them, they may have instructions on how to go about doing it, at least properly, how, how they see you should do it. Uh, this is just ways has been shown to me through the years, and you know, it's, it's worked out for me. So, got the head on there, and uh, I want to bolt the head down. I don't want to torque it, but just snug it down, and then. You know something else to kind of think about is none of these parts have worked together before you know I got a head from one manufacturer rocker arms from another uh, a camshaft from another manufacturer and you know all these things have to work together to make this engine run strong so one of the first things I do is I kind of just assemble the components together just to see how they interact with each other you know is there anything scraping rubbing hitting geometries off and like even the you know rocker arms uh, studs, one's the threads longer on one than the other, and so when I look at the holes, exhaust that's a blind hole, the intake, the threads look shorter and it looks like it pierces you know the intake port, so I definitely want to put some silicone on those when I screw them in. So I'm going to say the shorter one goes on the intake side. And the longer one goes on the exhaust side but one other check is I want to check the thread depth and you'll see here that they don't screw all the way down flush to the head they stick up a little bit so the threads stopped so I want to make sure by getting a guide plate trying to stick underneath it that I want that stud to tighten up on the you know push rod guide plate and not on the thread so by that check there it looked like you know it'll tighten up onto the guide plate uh, here's the roller rockers I bought from comp cam they are a solid roller uh, they're advertised to have like an EDM hole uh, machined in it to help oil the rollers and uh, you have this plate and this little plate here has an arrow. You gotta make sure you have that point in the right direction. And then you can assemble the two roller rocker arms that are gonna be working together for one of the cylinders. So let's get it over there in the engine. Ah, looking good. So another thing I like to do, especially on blind holes, is I might grind the bottom part of the threads at like a 45 degree taper. And that just gives me a little bit more insurance that my thread depth, if it's not enough, that I'll be tightening down on the part itself and not against the thread. And there's my two push rods. Now the exhaust I think is a a longer push rod and the uh, intake push rod is a little bit shorter. All right, so we got the rocker arms on there. Now I'm just cycling it uh, through a couple turns just to see how everything's working together. Now, you know, at first you're not sure how long the push rod really needs to be, and so I'm just sort of like roughing it right now. I'm just getting the geometry, you know closer than it was and so here and a, another thing I run into sometimes is the the keepers themselves and the the valve, valve screen keeper sometimes rubs the rocker arms there and I had plenty of room so that part there worked out great so now I'm still just working on getting sort of a, a, a rough push rod line and so I use a marker to for a witness mark on the top of the valve and so I'll, I'll tighten these down and I'll rotate the engine through a, a lift cycle and, and I, I move them back and forth sort of just to wear off a little bit of the marker so as it's, it's going through its lift 
I just keep shaking it back and forth and that just removes some of the Sharpie mark give me a better witness of what I need now I'm gonna show you kind of like what it looks like when the push rod length is you know off a good bit and then normally you know the one that I'm showing you is gonna be if your push rod length is too long all right so if I had a witness like that I would shorten the, the push rod now here <laughs> I'm showing you lengthening it but that's what I was doing actually to get the correct geometry that I was looking for so I've got the push rods very close to the length that I think I'm gonna go with so I'm getting more serious I want to make sure I go to max lift when I'm checking the witness mark and that's why I set my dial dial indicator up here just to make sure I, I go to max lift and uh, get a true witness mark for sure so I'm just and I want to do it for sure at you know no lift mid lift then max lift and uh, see where my witness mark lines up on that valve after that Well, let's get that off there and kind of see where we're at. All right, so let's get a look at it. Now the camera's kind of at an angle, but that's just about perfectly in the center of that exhaust valve. So now let's start working on the intake valve. Now, like I say, I got the push rod fairly close. And now I'm just gonna get more serious about the witness mark. Make sure I go to full lift. And I do have it marked out half lift too. So I, I'm definitely going to check it at no lift, half lift, and max lift and see where my witness mark lines up. Because in, in reality, if you think about it, mid lift probably is if your geometry is you know close anyways somewhere around mid lift should be the furthest the rocker arm goes out now that's not always true because you can't always get perfect 90 degree geometry but all right so there's a witness mark center of the valve i think i'm pretty happy with that so this is how i go got go about getting my push rod length that i'll call the manufacturer up and uh, I had a friend show me on a vice he had how he just lays the push rod on there and his calipers on there and just lines everything up perfect to measure the push rods. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It just works so good. It's kind of like it was made for it. All right. So now we have the push rod lengths that I'm pretty sure I'm going to go with. So I'll call up the manufacturers and see what push rod lengths they offer very close to those numbers, at least as close as I can get. So this next thing is, you know, how you can make your own push rods to check your own engine builds. And first thing you'll notice with push rods is they're hardened. Yeah, I got a file. It doesn't even touch it. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to O'Neill that push rod and make it soft where I can cut it. So I just take my old torch and, and you know, like the position where I want to put my screws at, I need to put it somewhere where my hands can get to it to, while it's installed in the engine, if I wanted to, to either lengthen it or shorten it. So got to kind of pick a spot on the push rod where that'll work and so I do I just I just got it red hot and then I'm just wanting it to cool off slower not a quench so now I have it O'Neilled and you can see that one push rod I had cut and I want it where it'll go shorter than a stock push rod and longer than a stock push rod so those are the marks I put on it so 
So I just take my bandsaw now, since it's soft and can be cut. And I cut out the section I don't need. Looking nice. Then I'm just gonna stick it in my lathe and chew the ends up. Take the file and break the edge. Now, what I found was, is a 1032 thread, you know, goes in there very nicely. And so I just start it with the lathe, just to get it good and square. Then I use my tap handle to run it the rest of the way in. Alright, so I got the threads in there. Then I just ran down down to the hardware store and got me a 1032 screw and cut the head of it off and two nuts. And there you have it. You got your adjustable push rod. You can adjust it however you need it to get your witness mark on top of your valve where you'd like it and that pretty much sums up how I go about getting my push rod blanks and how I go about making my own push rod checking tool and I hope you guys got some value out of this video and I hope you all liked it if you did like it please hit that like share it ring the bell if you'd like to subscribe and as always, guys, we appreciate you so much for watching. And we hope to see you all on the next video.